but this is a quick end of week one adultathon update so i'm going to try and do this for each week in february yeah I, I, you know what i'm like so it probably won't happen but hey i'm starting off the month how i mean to carry on fingers crossed so the adultathon please see the link in the description box for all the information on that but it's a readathon that was, was created by olivia's catastrophe and it's effectively seven prompts over the course of the month to read adult books. Now I did notice when I looked back um, on my TBR video that actually a lot of the books I picked weren't exactly adult books. There was a lot of um, middle grade, age 12 uh, and YA books in that pile. So what I've planned to do is intersperse my TBR with lots of adult books. Beginning of the month I managed to read Daisy Jones and the Six and I can't remember who wrote that at the moment. I'll leave, you know, info down below. Uh, my boss lent it to me because he picked it up uh, on a Sainsbury's bargain buy and said, you know, I think you might like this. You know, how are you with music and all that? And I was like, well, I did GCSE music. So I read Daisy Jones and the Six over the course of three days. Yeah, I didn't do much reading over the weekend. I know, bad girl. Effectively, it is written as a transcript of a documentary that for us in the UK, you'd watch on BBC4 looking at the career or the life of musicians or a band in a particular point in time, specifically the 70s. Um, now, I was born in 1980, so I missed the 70s. But I grew up listening to a lot of music from the era. I've watched an awful lot of documentaries about the bands that were around at that time and the history of music at that time. And I have to say... Reading Daisy Jones and the Six was very much a documentary on the telly that I would have probably have watched and I kept literally visualising that as I was reading. I could see clips and photographs of this band that technically never existed but the way the book is written, you believe in this band. Uh, there are lots of influences of Fleetwood Mac. If you don't know who they are, please go and educate yourself and listen to some of their music because, yeah, they're pretty damn marvellous but there's a lot of influences from that band and the members in that band and how they behaved and their rise to stardom um, in Daisy Jones and the Six so it's really hard at times not to imagine another band that you're reading about. What I really enjoyed even though it was a transcript you really got to know all the members of the band all the characters in the story you saw their character but you also saw their emotions because they're looking back on something from a 40 year gap it really does give them that that distance between what was happening then and now and I think that helps you relate to the characters a lot more because they can look back and go, yeah, I did make mistakes, I shouldn't have done this, but I did do this, I was a mess, and, you know, I wouldn't have people help me. And it's that honesty that the distance of time has given the characters. Um, I've quite a few reviews have pointed out that this book is a good reflection on memory, that there are certain events that band members... They remember it slightly differently, you know, so-and-so did something, oh no, it was this person, or this happened, or I left, or they left. Just little moments where they can't quite remember how things actually happened. So it really makes the band and the people very, very real. Uh, it doesn't help that at the back of the book there are all the lyrics for their big album that they um, shot to fame with. And you read through these lyrics and it's like, somebody please put music and that to these lyrics because i just want to hear these songs i really do it's it's for a fictional band and album it really feels real um so you know if someone's out there going i don't know what to do music for daisy jones and the six please that would be great there's also a very detailed look at the music industry and how songwriters create music uh, creative tensions, all that, you know, loggerheads within a band, uh, egos, jealousy, you know, blatant ignorance of what's going on around you. It's all there, you know, this is literally the sex, drugs and rock and roll of a band that never existed, but feels like it should have existed. And it's fascinating, it's really well written. Um, the story really unfolds nicely and naturally. You start at the beginning with the band getting together and then Daisy Jones and what she wants to do in her early life. And it follows through 
from the the Six's um, first album. Daisy Jones is coming in for the second album, doing a song with them and getting some recognition within the music industry and the fans. And then this whole, right, we're going to make you a seven member band and we're going to create this masterpiece. And reading that chapter, you can really feel the pressure and the tension between everybody as they try and create this thing that everybody is willing them to be marvellous. And you can feel that on them as they're writing it. Uh, but it's so well done, it really is. So Daisy Jones and the Six, if you've not read it, I really actually recommend it, but just be aware it is a transcript, but try and visualise the programme that it's come from in your head, even though it's not real. And this programme has never existed, and this band never existed, but your brain's going to be screaming at you that they do exist. It's so clever. After that, I read Moon Locket, which was one of the books on my TBR for Adultathon. So, as you can guess, this is an 8 to 12 book. It is a sequel to Cockheart, which follows Lily and Robert as they try and keep each other safe as bad people are trying to track down the Cockheart. Moon Locket follows on with the same characters, but it's a completely different storyline, focusing more on Robert and his search for family. What I like about this series is it's very um, steampunk. I think more cogpunk because it's relying on clockwork rather than steam mechanism to make the automations and mecha animals um, actually move about. And you've got this slight fantasy element where it's the blood diamonds that actually propel the mechanisms that gives them their life, which is a very interesting little detail that wasn't in the first book. And um, it's set in Victorian Britain, so you've got all the trappings of a Victorian era, the mannerisms, the clothing, with all this cog punk in. So you have dirigibles, um, which is your public transport. You have mechanicals, who are the servants or some of the workers. You've got mecha animals, which are animals that are mechanical beings, but they have an awful lot of personality. Malakin is the fox um, that lives with Lily and Robert, and he's full of sass. You know, this is a fox who really does know how to enjoy life a little bit but also isn't afraid to point out how ridiculous things are sometimes and it's like well what are you doing guys you know that didn't work last time why are you doing it again so I really like Malachi and there's also some very little commentary about um, hybrids and how they're looked down upon because they're not fully human so there's that element in here as well and the whole idea that the mechanicals will be taking people's jobs so we've got a bit of the luddites being mentioned here obviously rebelling a whole, against this whole mechanical era that's come into play i really like moon locket it's a quick easy read um very much an 8 to 12 um your book and it's a good decent solid sequel and really fleshes out robert's character a lot more which is very nice because the first book was very much lily's book this is robert's book which is nice so there are two more in the series and hopefully i will get around to reading them and then last night I finished A Little Women. So this follows the March sisters in a year of their childhood. Um, they don't become adults until Good Wives, which is book two in this series, so I'm going to have to go and get that. And it's very much, it's a gentle piece. This is literally four girls growing up, dealing with stuff around them, always trying to look on the bright side, and constantly trying to be better people than they already are. It's very sweet, it's very gentle, it's for fans of Anna Green Gables, Emily of the New Moon, Wind in the Willows, it's very much of that, that kind of story, just telling you how people are living, but done in a very entertaining way, very sweet way, and it's really just nice to read something that is so straightforward, that has no heavy duty plot line or you know, a big social issue we need to talk about. This is just children growing up and it's lovely. I have to admit, I thought I'd read Little Women before, but I don't actually recognise anything I read in here. So perhaps I haven't read Little Women before. There we go. So it must be one of those books that I really thought I had because everybody knows it so well. And uh, Obviously, we've had the film adaptations um, over the years. It's just one of those books I think it's always been the public consciousness. And so I must have thought I'd read it but I haven't. So I finally rectified that issue. I have read Little Women. I would like to go and get my hands on Good Wives and carry on with the story, picking up with Meg's wedding, which would be nice. What I have to admit is I did buy this for the cover. 
it's so pretty and the rest of the books actually match this edition as well that's my adultathon uh summary for week one it is currently friday the are we on the sixth seventh might be seventh i think it's the seventh today i'm having issues with dates so not bad three books in a week and i'm feeling quite good so today i'm actually going to start retribution falls uh, which actually is an adult book yay um and i'm going to read that and hopefully finish that over the weekend but you know you know i don't read much over the weekend so i might still be reading on monday as always small book tube in the description box down below link to the adultathon video and a list of the books i've read with their author's names because i'm rubbish at mentioning that sort of thing any comments um, you'd like to leave down below about those books that I've read, that would be lovely. If you're doing a Daltathon, let me know what book you're currently reading. That would be really interesting. And as always, thank you very much for watching and happy reading. Bye.